It was clear I wasn't the only one suffering from corporate burnout. What I've also noticed that we have in common is the famous golden handcuffs. On a, on a good day, we're still trapped in success or trapped in responsibility, and you don't just walk away. There are some really brilliant minds among these high-achieving CEOs, and they also deserve to be able to share their brilliance without it costing their, their health, their families, their relationships, their joy, their life. And there, there is a way to do that. But it is not obvious. And oftentimes, leaders just have no time, no bandwidth to figure it out. You know, people go to them for help, but there's no one who really gets them that they can go to for help, that they can truly feel safe and see that they can get healthier. They have to get healthier so the rest of the people in their businesses can thrive. And so when I noticed that gap, I realized that that is a gap that I am uniquely qualified to help close. High achieving executives do not have to choose between their health and their wealth. Now, corporate burnout is like an epidemic and a lot of people think they don't have a choice. And our guest today, Lynn Wong, knows a thing or two about uh, corporate working in 22 years uh, globally with industry leaders. So she knows a thing or two about being a high achiever and working in corporate and burnout and how to get on the other side of that. And uh, she's going to share with you how you don't have to deal with that burnout, how you can you know, break through to higher levels in your business. So uh, welcome, Lynn. Hey, Dr. Shana, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I am so excited to hear from you. Uh, you have a different background than a lot of health coaches that we talk to. You're an executive health coach, in fact, a, a human well-being coach. Tell everybody a little bit about uh, what you do and how did you come to do this line of work, do this pivot into what you're doing now? Mm. Thank you for asking. I get to help corporate high achievers gain energy to do the work they love without burning out. So I am a human well-being coach. You know, it's really important to distinguish yourself, especially in this day and age where there is there are lots of coaches and there are also coaching bots out there. Yeah. I'm also a career mentor uh, to the people that I get to work with. And so tell us a little bit about take us back to you had lots of accomplishments, uh, huge accomplishments. Feel free to brag on yourself a little bit uh, here. You had uh, were working in companies in, in, in Singapore and China and the U.S. and traveling and well-known companies we've heard of like Home Depot and Walmart and, and, and such. And, and part of you really loved that work, uh, but it led to burnout. So talk us through a little bit about where you were and then kind of what happened when you burned out, how did that show up? And then what did you learn from that? Coaches and mentors have been a really big part of my success as a corporate executive. As you mentioned, um, I am one of those people that genuinely loved my time in corporate. What is there not to love? You get to work with the world's biggest teams, the more the merrier. Um, and I accomplished all my big goals in that space of living and working in at least three different countries with the bis biggest and best global teams, like you mentioned, you know, in shipping and retail, all with my health and marriage in excellent states, all before 40. So, you know, that- That's that, an accomplishment. That's an accomplishment. That's yeah. the good news. Now, where's the bad news? <laughs> now that I'm on the other side, I, I can now acknowledge it. Um, but at the time, you know, despite accomplishing all that before 40, my original excellent health started to break down yeah. and I just started to burn out. Why? Because I started to look to my left and right and start to compare myself to other high achievers and began to doubt myself. I tried really hard to fit into other people's definitions of success and made my achievements like smaller and smaller in the process, which then spiked my stress levels and severely worsened my already underlying imposter syndrome. Yeah. Did you have like diagnoses that popped up or symptoms that popped up as a, as a result? Because sometimes people will feel like um, an imposter syndrome and, and that's maybe like, maybe that's the first stage, uh, but it didn't end there. Like you had more that, that happened. Tell us a little bit about what that was like. 
Yeah, I couldn't see it at the time. I mean, everybody around me was talking about imposter syndrome. So it can kind of seem like, you know, like you climb a mountain, the air gets thinner as you move to the top. And so it's just the natural part. Everybody had it. Um, but my original good health deteriorated. Um, an autoimmune disease found me. My hair started to fall out in clumps. There was a um, a bald patch about the size of my fist, like on the side mm-hmm. of my head, which is why I wear my part on the other side now. Well, there's there's hair all over now. Yeah, um, so you got it back. But at that point, when all that happened, I only made minimal adjustments to my lifestyle to get healthy. Mm-hmm. I then had a really severe bout of COVID and then burnout came for me. Yeah. You know, stress is, is stress really impacts your health. I know when I was working as a tertiary care doctor and it's super stressful conditions and, and my hair was falling out and I didn't ever get a diagnosis or have autoimmune or anything like that. But, you know, it was to the extent that uh, my hairdresser was talking to me about wigs and special shampoos and to cover my bald spot and I'm not tall <laughs> and so like other people could see that it was, fortunately it was here I mean you, I could cover it with a hat um, but hats aren't always appropriate and uh, and it was funny as I went through and aligned and, and started doing work that lit me up as opposed to burning me out um, we, there was a move in there, new hairdresser. And I said, um, you know, you know, do what you need to do to cover that bald spot, you know? And she's like, what bald spot? I'm like, well, you know, you know, and she's like, you don't have a bald spot. There's, there's no bald spot here. And so like things, you know, gradually over time, um, you know, when you improve, so there's, there's lots of, um, uh, lots of things. So your, your health is, is challenged. I think I remember you talking about a, a moment, uh, it was in, in, in May, like there was like this turning point moment for you that you vividly remember, you know, sh- share a little bit about what happened on that key day. Yeah. Oh, I, I definitely remember. Um, yeah. I can just even feel the, the, the weight of the blanket. It was the same blanket I'd always had, but it just felt extra heavy that day. It was May 15th and I just could not get out of bed, just sheer fatigue. I was about to miss an important leadership meeting for the very first time in 20 years of corporate life, never happened. Um, I finally managed to crawl out of bed later that afternoon and got in to see a doctor. Um, She prescribed some tests, wrote a bunch of referrals, gave me orders to take the rest of the week off to rest Um, and you know, in that week, that that was the wake up call of my life. Um, subsequent doctor visits revealed a fibroid, a cyst, a bunch of injections to my scalp, and I knew it was time. And um, you know, the, <laughs> you still kind of get. I, I don't know if you'll ever shake that, but there were lots of feelings of shame um, and failure, and feeling like I had let everybody at work down. Yeah, you know, I think. That is the thing. And and so much in, in work and even in, in, in the hospital, like I saw amazing, well, doctors, nurses, ultrasound techs, we just churned and burned through them. You know, it's just like they burnt out, threw them aside, got a new body in there to do the job. And, and it, that's not right because these people have experience, they have wisdom, they're brilliant, they have a lot of skill set to bring to the table, but the conditions are such that it's such a pressure cooker that it just kind of destroys it and and um, kind of, you know, my, my mom used to tell me just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it right. And, you know, just because everyone's doing it doesn't make it right. And, and I think that's one of the things that you discovered. But you know, like these high achievers, they'll do anything for, you know, other people, right? That's why they, that's why they get where they are and they're, they're high achievers. They're going for it. They're doing it. Um, but some often, often at the sacrifice of their sleep, of their nutrition, of their exercise, of their family and relationships, and then it st- starts to all unravel and then when it costs you your own health, you no longer can do that. And, and it's a spiral down to the bottom after that. Um, and so I love that you then did a radical thing uh, in the midst of this. So you were hit with this. And I really feel like in your severe, you know, 
in, in like super achiever status. Like, so the, the one thing is to just keep limping along and doing the best you can feebly and just kind of like, you know, fade out into the sunset with the last, you know, specks of you together, uh, not serving anyone really. Uh, you decide to do something radical and you decided to commit to a sabbatical, you, you decided to take yourself on as a project to get back to a healthy state so that you could fully show up and do the work that you really love with excellence. I mean, that's a radical move. And that is that is like super high achieving. Um, so tell us about like, you know, what happened there? What did you learn on that journey? I, I arguably you'd say that was the best decision ever. Uh, but you could see it, this is just getting worse and worse and worse. Like we got to do something radical to get things back, you know, on track. So tell us a little bit about your uh, sabbatical. Well, thank you for the continued encouragement. You know, looking back, it's easy to talk about it, you know, from a place of um, much better health and, and healthier energy. But at that time, in that fog, um, there were a lot of feelings of, of shame. Um, at the same time, that quiet knowing that had been building um, was just getting clearer and clearer. And that is also one of the key lessons I've learned that that I did have a choice out of burnout. And so I made that choice. I committed to a sabbatical that I'd been saving for for a while. You know, I thought I would take it at 50, maybe 67. I pulled forward and decided that I needed to get back to a healthy state so I could fully show up and do the work with excellence with people I love for people I love. So my self-funded sabbatical took place uh, from July to December. And inside of that, I kept it simple. I signed up for yoga classes and invested in two coaching programs, one to gain knowledge and the other to gain community. Like I mentioned before, I am the beneficiary of, of a lot of good coaches and sponsors, you know, in corporate. And why wouldn't it work for me outside? So I took those chances and it led me to learning some some really critical foundational things like for instance being healthy is more than life without medicine or life without disease you know two everyone's well-being is deeply unique multi-dimensional and, and bio-individual and then three um i am the one i've been waiting for i talked about choice um you know that that really should be number one but um yeah the the other lesson tied to that is I always have a choice about my attitude. I just needed to make it. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, something I practice every morning is me first in the morning is really key to having a good day and being of service to people I care about. I love it. So um, I just want to clarify it. So those are really great and clarify a couple of things. I love how you said, you know, it's, um, you know, being healthy is not, it, it gets back to, it's not just being not sick. Uh, so much of, of what we do and the way we look at it is just being not sick. And there's so much more. I, I think that's why you go to the human well-being <laughs> coach as, as your definer. Um, but tell people, this audience is vast and broad. And I know there's a, a community from IIN, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, who are very familiar with the term bio-individual, but other listeners that we have here may not know what bio-individual means. So when you say uh, well-being is multidimensional and bio-individual, just expand on that. What do you mean by that? Yeah. So, you know, at its simplest and most easily uh, perhaps understood, health is more than just your physical health. It's also your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, and your spiritual well-being. And you know that that's regardless of the religion you you choose to practice or not. And by your individuality, you know the, the age you are in your life, how you grew up, where you live now, all those elements um, that make you you are unique at a moment in time, and they will shift through the seasons of your life. And so, since there's really only one of us at any given point in time. Our well-being is is deeply unique. Yeah, love that. Leah, love all of that. Okay, so you go through this sabbatical, uh, you you discover these things, and then um, 
how did that impact, you know, your, your, your shift out of burnout and, you know, those feelings of failure and shame and, you know, wh what other things kind of came from that? Yeah, that time in sabbatical was really pivotal. It moved me from deep shame. You know, I remember calling my sponsors and mentors to let them know that, you know, I was taking a sabbatical and it was really difficult. But that that quiet time, that inward pause um, gave me time to work on some self-compassion, which then paved the way for self-confidence to rebuild. I doubled down on nourishing my body, reviving my, my spirit, release stress and reclaim my mind. Um, it's ongoing work, but I really needed that committed me time, me first time, right? Um, to then build back up. And I honestly thought I was gonna go back to corporate, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the combination of the quiet rest and the two coaching programs I signed up for actually helped me see that there was another opening that was just waiting for me to step into because I have completed all I had set out to do at corporate with the biggest and best companies. And that was just complete. So um, while being a really good student, uh, I realized um, moving into executive health coaching would be the next important step in my contribution to the world. Yeah. And so that is that why you um, so that's kind of why you decided to be a health coach. Uh, you kind of saw from from, you know, discussions we've had. I remember you saying like you saw a gap. So like the plan was restore health, get back, get doing what you're doing. And then you're like, you know what? I, I'm complete. Like I, I, I got to the top of my game here in that. And now it's time to pivot. And you were uniquely qualified uh, because you had been there, done that. You speak the language, you understand the unique challenges. And then you're like, I'm, you know, I'm not the only one who's burnt out here. So is that kind of like what led you into this executive health coaching? Tell us anything else that you, you want to share around that. Yeah. Um, so like I mentioned before, coaching and mentoring were also my favorite parts of the corporate life. What's there not to love when you right. see people align to whatever makes them come alive and deliver results, right? So I knew I would always fully commit to this work someday, but I thought someday was the traditional retirement age. So getting to do it early was really fulfilling, but that sabbatical gave me the opportunity to see that intersection of how my international experiences and my growing knowledge of health and wellness could support high achieving global leaders. I was like, okay, um, you know, this is the work that I want to get up and do every day. Yes. And just as important, healthy executives are critical to healthy economies and societies. You know, that work is rewarding, but very often lonely, stressful, and not sustainable without a commitment to holistic health. If they cannot take care of themselves, they won't be as successful taking care of their teams and their customers. I think that a lot of times they, they, uh, you get caught up in the rat race. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that they, I mean, this is my opinion. I don't think it's that they really don't want to. They want to take care of themselves. They just don't have time to do that. There's just like only so much bandwidth to go around. And you know, sort of their, some of their, you know, unique challenges that they, that they have uh, in corporate, uh, like, uh, you know, and you, you will know better than I, but, you know, probably like, you know, eating out corporate dinners that you have to do like or, you know that they're probably not going to be the healthiest so but like that's the thing and this is what they're having and that's what you got to do or the travel uh the travel so exhausting and time zones and sleep deprivation and staying up all night to meet deadlines and the stress and and really kind of everybody coming to to you uh, for help, but, you know, you not being able to go to anyone else for help and, um, you know, feel free to share or expand on any, anything like that. But I think you were uniquely poised to see how, you know, what these global leaders, um, where they were challenged and where they were, you know, not able to just easily access that help. It, it was clear. I wasn't the only one suffering from corporate burnout. Um, and, 
what I've also noticed that we have in common is the famous golden handcuffs, mm -hmm. right? On a, on a good day, we're still trapped, yeah. trapped in success or trapped in responsibility and you don't just walk away. Right. Um, and there are some really brilliant minds among these high achieving CEOs and you know they're they're a lot of fun to hang out with, and they also deserve to be able to share their brilliance without it costing their their health, their families, their relationships, their joy, their life. And there there is a way to do that, but it is not obvious. Um, you know, in my case, that's why I burned out. And oftentimes, leaders just have no time, no bandwidth to figure it out. You yeah. know, and yeah. like you mentioned, the challenges that they do have when they're leading from the top unhealthy dinners, late nights, missing family events, guilt, travel schedules, and they can't be vulnerable. The last thing in the world they want to do is to let someone in their company know they can't handle it or don't know something. It could cost them their career. Yeah. So, you know, people go to them for help, but there's no one who really gets them that they can go to for help, that they can truly feel safe and see that you know, they, they can get healthier, they have to get healthier. So the rest of the people in their businesses can thrive. And so when I noticed that gap, I realized that that is a gap that I am uniquely qualified to help close. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And you know, when they're healthier, they have a healthier bottom line too, you know, so usually that for, mo for a lot of these high achievers that that success is kind of they'll do whatever it takes a and if it's getting healthier it would just kind of you know why you decided to do the sabbatical in the first place for yourself now people don't have to take a whole sabbatical now <laughs> that was your mm -hmm. approach radical approach but you know what you learned in that year you know people don't have to quit their job sometimes people do I think you do how, tell us a little bit about how do you work with uh your clients uh you know how, how do you how do you walk them through things here. Yeah. Um, I have a range, but majority of my clients are corporate high achievers or between burnout and, and breakthrough. And they're both really important points in the journey of one's work, life work, right? So I have coached clients who are able and committed to sabbatical. I've also coached them when they're between significant professional transitions. They're I've also coached some who are in personal transformation, different season of life. And so, you know, they already have a proven record of investing in professional development and they lead with their goals. We work closely virtually so that it fits into their crazy schedules. And I listen to them and curate a strengths-based whole person focus path to guide them to more clarity and more energy to do the work they love so they don't burn out. And we do that by diving into how can they replenish their body? How can they revive their creativity? How can they release stress? And most importantly, how can they reclaim their headspace, their mind? Yeah. Um, so, you know, through a lot of accountability and support, they know exactly what to do to get on the other side of it. And we do get results. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, these high powered, uh, high achievers are just like, if I could just like lock myself in a room for like, you know, a week or a day and just like, you know, get clear, think clearly, uh, but they get this on this treadmill. So that's something that you help, you know, um, bring that clarity in while they're working, while they, you know, because they can't just stop or quit. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you help them incorporate that. That's fantastic. Uh, so awesome. And it really helps to have somebody who gets it, who's not going to say, well, just don't work so hard. <laughs> just go home early. Uh, you know, just you know, close the office doors. Like it's, it's not in the reality is that, okay, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> you no longer have a company. So how do you be successful and uh, be healthy? So I love that. That's what you help them with. So Lynn, as someone who's got 22 years of leadership experience amongst these global uh, industry leader companies that we've, we've talked about and who's, really familiar with what it is to be in corporate burnout and how to do that. How do you bring people or, or, well, actually, let me ask you this. What is the biggest myth uh, when people are going from burnout to breakthrough? Uh, what is the biggest myth that people have when it comes to burnout? The biggest myth is that we don't have a choice, but we do. We can choose our way out of burnout. 
But like I said before, it's not obvious. And, you know, these corporate high achievers, these leaders generally have no time, no bandwidth to figure it out. I get it. I was that. Mm -hmm. And when you add their unique challenges of late nights, crazy travel, everyone coming to them for help and, you know, limited access to help. Um, yeah, that's why I do what I do now. Yeah. And I, and I remember you saying, it's not just like, it's, it's not just like sleeping in on the weekends or like, you know, limiting yeah. your email or turning off yes. your phone. Um, yes. That's not going to do it. And, and you're living proof that, you know, if you don't address the burnout, you know, you, well, you have a saying something about the, uh, yeah, if you don't, well, what's your saying? Yeah. So, you know, like you mentioned, you can't fix it by sleeping more on the weekends. I tried. Can't fix it by taking all your vacation, turning off emails between set hours. I tried. It is your body telling you to take a break before the break turns you. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I had a similar saying, I think I said, um, you know, take a break or you're going to be given one <laughs> and something's going to yeah. happen. I, you know, that just, forces you to rest and it's usually not good at all so yeah finding that way but easier said than done and so I I really resonate with what you say it doesn't seem like a choice uh, but yet it is I remember the founder of IIN Joshua Rosenthal when I was still working as a doctor trying to create a health coaching practice kind of going in a bunch of different directions and um I remember, you know, him, he had a new pro another level of a program and I'm like, I really wanted to do it, but I couldn't because I have to, you know, do all of these other things and I'm, I got to cover the call and this and that. And he just said this one line and his profoundness, the way he is, he says, we don't have to do anything. Mm, and I'm like, ah, I can hear so him. kind of yes. like, you know, and I'm like, because we do choose what we want to do. It feels like we have to. And so I like where you say, um, you know, they, they don't have a choice that they have to be burnt out because of these circumstances. Um, but then there's that gap between, okay, if I have a choice, all right, maybe I'll believe that, but I don't see the options in front of me. I don't, you know, and for most people that they would go to, um, they don't have really good options. Because for these people that have no time, they're crazy, they probably don't like, they're not crazy, but they're crazy busy. <laughs> and they're, well, maybe they're a little crazy, uh, aren't we all? Uh, but they don't have the bandwidth to like research and, and, and do all these things. And they don't have time to just like take a week off at a time, you know, just to get do a refresh or a reboot, which only lasts until like 8 a.m. Monday morning, you know, and then you're right back at it. It's, it's just a Band-Aid. So to really be able, uh, as you say, to find tools that integrate in their crazy, hectic uh, schedules, because you get it, uh, but we all sleep some more than others, but we all do have that moment. We all eat, uh, we all drink water at some point. And so you, and we all breathe. So these are things that we all have in common and you help them take these things that they're doing anyways, mm -hmm. but may, being more intentional with it, line it up so that it serves them and, and really giving them a space to uh, a container for transformation um, and kind of walk them through and give them all your, you know, your, your cheat code, if you will, <laughs> or the things that you, you learned the hard way. Um, so I love that uh, Lynn. Yeah. So thanks. Um, why, why is avoiding burnout important, would you say? You know, healthy executives are so important, more than ever before, to healthy economies, societies, countries, and that work is really important and, and fun and rewarding. It can also be lonely, stressful, and, and just impossible to sustain yeah. if these leaders, these executives, don't commit to their own whole health first, right? Healthy executives have presence. They have the ability to really inspire hope through their work that will translate to value for all their stakeholders, their teams, their suppliers, their customers, their communities. And it, it is really important that they take time to discover their unique, their multidimensional bio-individual work-life integrity. You know, in corporate, it is, you know, important and normal to talk about integrity in the workplace as being honest and honoring principles. 
I don't think we talk enough in the workplace that integrity is about being whole and not broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, work-life integrity really begins when one takes full ownership of the well-being of their body, their spirit, heart, and mind to become whole. It, it means taking a me first approach in the morning, you know, kind of like you described, like we all drink water, we all breathe, right? And we all move. If we just simply do that, you don't have to take a sabbatical. And, you know, certainly I hope that's not the takeaway, yeah. um, you know, for many yeah. from this call. Um, but I, I just used to think that, oh, I need to do good first to then feel good. And then I will be whole. Now I know that feeling good is really the first thing to being able to do good yeah. and be good for other people and the work that matters. And so, you know, work-life integrity also means releasing all excuses, releasing the victim, you know, and acknowledging and allowing that unlearning and deconditioning to start so that we can become whole and healthy and happy. Love it. Love it. I love it. What, what are some tips that you can share with people? People are listening, they're corporate burnout. What are some tips that you can share with, with our viewers? My favorite is begin with choice, right? So choose to slow down, to speed up and meet your full whole potential. Easier said than done. I also like to follow with the five basics, breathe deeply, drink water, eat whole foods, move joyfully and sleep well. And last but not least, try and create your me first in the morning ritual to sustain yourself. It can be something as simple as when the alarm goes off, take five deep breaths, then drink that first glass of water before you dive into anything else, especially your email. Yeah. And, and that doesn't take, that takes no time at all to, to drink water and, you know, take five deep breaths first thing in the morning. So that's one of those little secret little ways to sneak it in there before you're like reacting to the world. Um, so, so good. What are some of the spinoff benefits as you've been helping people uh, overcome burnout? What are some of the spinoff benefits that you've seen with your clients? My clients have gained energy and clarity to move towards the work that fulfills them in the home, at work. And they've also discovered and adopted new practices that are fun and sustainable for their unique well-being. And as a result, the relationships with the people they care about have also improved. Love it. Love it. So give me a, an example of somebody um, like I, I believe you, you're talking about a woman. Uh, you'll know the story better than I do. Uh, that, you know, you, you were working with her, she was burnt out. Tell us a little bit of some of the specifics of what did she start to do? Like when she got freed up and out of the grip of the burnout, the exhaustion, what happened? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Um, confidentiality, as you know, is critical to honor the work I do with these executive clients, right? Uh, yeah. But I do have permission to share a little bit about the work we did together. And so this client, um, she actually invested in a sabbatical to reward herself after more than a decade of co-founding and then supporting the sale of a multi-million dollar Series B technology company. Um, and we worked through her exhaustion, stress, and identity crisis that clouded the beginning of her sabbatical. You know, she she was committing to discovering her best self. Like she knew she, it was not over. That was just the beginning, but she didn't know how to necessarily steadily make it through. Um, but we worked together and three months later, she came out confident with healthier habits. She reconnected to her creativity and claimed her strengths. She was clear about what she was good at and how she could get even better in service of others, right? So other fun things that happened, she used to be the leader of you know, salsa dance groups, and she is back dancing again. She is a mom of two. Uh, somehow she has found time to even create a video about some of her journey, including one on releasing her imposter syndrome. She's oh. now a podcast host. She has expanded her professional network significantly, given back a lot to her professional communities, and is currently building her next business. She loves what she does, and she can now do it in a much more sustainable way than ever before. So good. And the gifts just keep on giving and giving and giving. Like you totally just helped her alter that trajectory of her life from burnout to back dancing again and new company and 
podcasts and, you know, that's not everybody's cup of tea, but, you know, being able to do what she loves and I just love it. Thank you so much, Lynn, for the work that you do, shining your light and helping these execs because they really don't have a lot of people that they can confide in who get it, who get what they're going through. Um, and they'll be like, oh, boo-hoo, cry it into your golden handcuffs. <laughs> they don't even understand that terminology. So uh, for people who are listening and they're like, okay, well, this sounds good, but uh, they have questions. They're like, yeah, but you don't know about my business. Or how can they reach out to you? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you or find out more about what you, the work you do? Yeah, people can find me on LinkedIn at Lin Wong Live or my website at lwcoaches.com. Awesome. So that's Lynn, L-Y-N-N, and Wong, W-O-N-G, and your website, L-W-Coaches, C-O-A-C-H-E-S dot com. Uh, that is fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I super appreciate you and the work that you do. I super appreciate all of you for listening. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Share it with somebody. If you know of somebody who's struggling with this, absolutely give it a share. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to pop those below. And if you have a topic or a scenario that you would like us to uh, dive into a uh, leader, an expert in, then by all means say, hey, I want to know something about this particular condition or situation and we'll line up an interview to satisfy that. So with that, have a fantastic week, everyone. Thank you, Lynn. And of course, most of all, be good for you.